Hey guys, Captain Figurine back with another video and today we will take a closer look at update 0.1.20.40. There were several things the community requested and they added some stuff here and there is a lot going on. So first they added some missions for the Invasion of Normandy campaign and for the Moscow campaign. The way how enemy AI soldiers detect is also been changed a little bit. Then there is the big one. They have removed the spawn protection on the rally points. That's like the huge one. I saw this one everywhere. Everybody was complaining. I saw one point that was like, yeah, but what happens if they start to build like MG spots and just small the spawning people down? And yeah, we will see. I think the spawn protection was kind of annoying. They also worked on some damage models. So for the secondary shrapnel damage, we will see how that affects the tanks and the planes. So for the mission I was talking about, the Visokovo village assault map has been brought back to the Battle of Moscow campaign. So pretty cool one there. And there is a new version of the Le Bre invasion for the Normandy campaign, where the allies are the attacker. Next one is something with the weapons and the equipment. You are not longer able to drop special items like the engineer hammer or the radio operator set or stuff like that. So next one, we have the AI soldiers. The AI soldiers should not longer prevent you from building anymore. So if they stay in your path and you try to build something, you can build it even if they're there, but we will test it out. Then we have the improved system of AI soldier enemy detection, that the one I was talking a little bit earlier. The enemy AI will be less effective at detecting enemies at the flanks or behind if they don't shoot. If they shoot, sound will affect the AI a little bit more. So if you don't move and don't shoot and if you stay sneaky, there is a lower chance that they will detect you. And they reduce the AI alertness for crouching and crawling players over long distances. And I think this one is good too. It was a little bit easier to sneak around, get some good sniper's position, but sometimes the AI still caught you somewhere and just tapped you down, right? Does happen, does happen, but it's okay. Then we got stuff for our economics and finally the old system is back. So yeah, bronze orders no longer will be awarded through the battle tasks. Now for every 3000 XP you earn, you will get some orders. So yeah, we have the old system back, the battle pass and the battle tasks still work the same. So you can do up to nine or up to three battle tasks per day. Depends if you're a premium battle pass player or not. They added the ability to skip the battle pass stages with in-game money. So the first 14 cost 45 gold, after that 15 to 21 is 75 gold, 22 to 28 is 125 gold, and from 29 further on is 175 gold. And that's the amount of times you skip the level. Next we have graphic and animations. They added new effects for tank shell penetration hitting different objects. So we'll test out that one. They added visual effects for the tank and machine gun hits to different objects. And they added reload animation for the M2 hide. So let's check out this one. All right, next we have some interface changes. In the briefing screen, you can now see how much XP each individual squad gained and how much you gained through the premium account. The camera direction in transports is now more visible. You can now remove marker by clicking on them again, which is kind of nice. They added a star animation when the soldier is delivered. They added an ammo image in the menu. Battle task progress can now be checked in battle. If you try to use enemy supply crate, you will now see a message that's an enemy one. They improved the icons on the logistic menu. They now better should represent each weapon in each category. You can change the squad in practice now from the menu. The tutorial checkpoint zones were made higher and wider, so they were harder to hit and miss. And disconnected players are shown in the dark tone in the debriefing, so to make balance scores a little bit more clear. And then we had some gameplay changes and I think gameplay changes always good. So we are not longer able to aim while jumping. The grenade throw mechanics has been improved. So the throwing and the angle of arm movement has a little bit changed. And the left thumb now should indicate the throwing direction. I already used the left hand as a throw indicator, but you needed to get used to that. As I said, they moved the immunity at the rally spots. Now you are prohibited to build rally points near the stationary spawn points in each mission. Now the respawn points in invasion mode are moved immediately after new strategic zones have been captured. So yeah, there's no need for you to destroy your old spawn point and build a new one. You can, you can get the resources back and build a new one. 
And if you build these mobile rally points close to each other, they will count as one single spawn point and the game will, you know, send you to one of these spawn points. The next change is also a very nice one. For example, in Invasion, if you push someone back and the spawn point, or I mean the location you have to capture changes, all the rally points near there got destroyed. They are not allowed that close to the point because, you know, you build them like when you know the next point you have to defend, you can already build some rally points there. And I think that was a little bit too good. Now the mobile rally point can only be destroyed by the enemy or the player who has built it. So I think that's also a really good one. Now the amount of supplies dropped from dismantling crates depends on the amount of unused ammo in it. They added for the tutorial a special for the tutorial they added a special target tank entity and for practice they finally added the tanks I was waiting so long for. So now you can test your PTRDs on these tanks and, and we can hopefully show this stuff a little bit better. And now the shells are ejected on bolt action weapons when the first button is released. So let's see, maybe we have also an ejection on the sniper rifle now. You can now do the field of view separately for vehicles and soldiers. And now if you control the plane with the keyboard, the mouse controls are blocked. So it's not super messy and almost impossible to control for some players. And last but not least, we have all the other fixes. So we have a lot of stuff there. I just picked important ones for you guys. So it's not just reading down a super long list. Weapon pickups will now have the correct properties. Let's see if the weapon pickup will work overall because this was still sometimes a little bit buggy. The midair marks from planes will not longer remain there if you kill them. And when the tank is set on fire, the tank compartments will fill with smoke. So that sounds kind of epic. They fixed the walk animation for soldiers more than 30 meters away. When you use the stationary machine gun, your bot will not longer obscure your vision. I had some problem with that as well. They fixed the commander position of the BA-11. They fixed the interaction with the ladder when you look straight above it. They increased the swimming speed upwards when looking up, so keep that in mind. Then there was something with the car 98 k with the she specher launcher, so it loaded the clip even when the magazine was partially full, so they fixed that bug too. They lowered the reload speed of the Moss 36 a little bit, so we had a small buff there. And for the MP40-1 from the Battle of Berlin campaign, they should now switch the magazines, because they used this double magazine mechanism. They fixed the bug that lowered the damage for the shrapnels on the tank, so you should get the right damage there now. They fixed incorrect damage calculations on the aircraft on certain cases, so we will see how that affects the game. I'm pretty sure some people from my Discord can tell me if the plane physics are better now, because they also talked about the calculated aircraft physics, so yeah, tell me if that one's better now. And the rain in Berlin should just appear if the weather condition is appropriate. So I would love to see all this changing weather on all the maps we have. That gives us so much more different scenarios and the maps would feel so different. I mean, I already like the snowstorm on the fortified district and I would love to see more of these weather conditions. But yeah, that's it for our update. So it was a whole list of stuff that's going on. Quite a big update we had. I hope you enjoyed this stuff. Tell me down in the comment section what you like the most. If you have some stuff they still didn't fix or maybe some stuff doesn't work as intended as they say in, in the patch notes here. So as always guys, I hope this video was useful to you. And if you don't want to miss any further enlisted news and stuff, stay tuned and I see you next time. Captain Figurine out.